All right, so the lesson we're going to do today is on the equation of the line, okay? And we're learning, gosh, oh, away, pencil, calculator. We're learning that the equation of the line has a form y equals mx plus b, okay? So the equation of the line always has that format, y equals mx plus b, where m is always going to be the slope number, and b is always going to be the y-intercept number. Has anyone heard y-intercept before? Maybe. In elementary school, does anyone know what it is in grade 9 yet? Okay, it's, the, it's where the line touches the y-axis. Okay, so y-intercept is where the line touches the y-axis. Okay, so in this y equals mx plus b, I would do go to the page here. I'll, go, I'll come back there. But just so you know, when you have y equals mx plus b, this is always going to be your slope number, something like that. So this number is your slope. The number that's beside the x, okay, is always going to be your slope number. And then the number at the end, positive 4 in this case, is where it touches the y-axis. Okay, so if you were drawing a picture of this, then you would know at 4, there's a point there. The y-intercept is positive 4, okay? And then you could use the slope, because you know slope is rise over run, to get more points. So you can rise up one, rise up one, and over two, and that would be another point on your line. Okay? So that's that's why it's important to know the y-intercept because that's where you start, okay? And then use the slope number to get all your points that lie up in the line. Right? Okay, so back to here, and we're learning to complete a table of values for a straight line and draw its graph. So our first example, we're going to draw the line y equals 2x plus 3 by completing the table of values. How many people have used an equation to complete a table of values before? No? Okay. So here's our equation. See how it says show work here? It gives me a value of x. It wants to know what y value goes with x being 0. So I use this equation to find the y value, and I use substitution to replace x with 0. So I would do 2, and then use brackets to replace x with 0, and then plus 3. That's how I'm going to get the y value that goes with x being 0. Josh, are you copying this down? 2 times 0 plus 3. So in your head or on your calculator, figure out what 2 times 0 plus 3 is. In your head or on your calculator, figure out what 2 times 0 plus 3 is. Oh, uh, 3. Yes. Okay, well, you try it on your calculator. 2 times 0 plus 3. Yeah. The more you do things that I ask you to do, the more you're going to learn. Okay? All right, now 1 is our x value. 1 is our x value this time. So we're going to still do the 2. Replace the x, this time with 1 plus 3. So now we have to do 2 times 1 plus 3 on our calculator in our head. 2 times 1 plus 3. 
And that turns out to be 5. And then I'm going to do 2 times 2 plus 3. So I'm replacing x with 2 this time. 2 times 2 plus 3. 7. And then replacing x with 3 this time. 2 times 3 plus 3 is 9. And even without filling in the work here, what do you know this is going to be and what, how do you know it? Charlie? Because the rise. Yeah. Love it. So he knows this is the rise and the pattern is going up by 2 each time. So he knows that's going to be 11, even though he didn't type it into his calculator. Okay? And sure enough, 2 times 4 plus 3 is 11. Okay, and uh, all right, so if we were just to plot these points, the point when x is 0 and y is 3, so in other words, the point 0, 3, where would that be on my graph? Where would the point 0, 3 be on my graph? Who can explain to me how to get to 0, 3? Yeah. On the y, very good, at 3. So there's the point 0, 3. Okay? Now I'm looking at when x is 1, y is 5. So the point 1, 5. So who can tell me how to get to the point 1, 5 on my graph? How do I get to that point? Yep. First line. Yep, so over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 1, 5. Okay? The next one, 2, 7. So 2, 7. Are you noticing a pattern? Over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 2 should be the next one, which is 3, 9. And it is. And then 4, 11. So then get your ruler out and join them with a ruler. And when you draw the line, uh, for us now, we're going to draw right through them but beyond them, okay? And then we're going to put arrows on the end of our line. And the arrows show that we're just showing the portion of the line that fits on our graph. We're only showing the portion of the line that fits on our graph. That's why we have the arrows on the end. Because if our graph is bigger, our line would be bigger. Okay? Now, Charlie was talking about knowing what this one was going to be because the rise was 2. And the run is always 1 in this case. So if I asked you based on yesterday to calculate the slope, how could you calculate the slope from the table? Now that we know the rise and the run. Yep. Yep. And then that uh, just is 2. Now remember how we said that m is a slope number? Look at this. m is the slope number. So there's our m. That is our slope. Okay? And remember how we said this one was going to be our y-intercept? Positive 3, that is our y-intercept. That's where the line touches the y-axis, right here. So this is our y-intercept 3, and that's our slope 2. Okay? So it says state our slope, which we did. Our y-intercept is b, so b is 3. 
Y intercept, another name for it is the initial value. That's where you start from, okay? So the table, the graph, and the equation are all connected together. This line here is called the line y equals 2x plus 3. And in a couple of days, you'll be able to look at that line, that equation y equals 2x plus 3, and you'll know that it has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. And you'd be able to draw it just based on that. Okay? All right. Draw the line y equals negative 2x plus 9 by completing the table of values. Determine the slope and the y-intercept. Before we start, can anyone tell me the slope already based on the equation? Negative 2. Okay, so already Rock is saying the slope should be negative 2, and we'll prove it. Does anyone already know what the y-intercept should end up being based on the equation? Rock again? No, I was just stretching. Anyone? Yep. Nine. Yep. All right, so let's show our work. So we're using negative two x plus nine as our rule. So negative two, replace x with zero, plus nine. Negative two times zero plus nine is nine, good. Negative two times one plus nine. Negative 2 times 1 plus 9. Um, no, I don't know. You don't know? Molly? 7. Good. Negative 2 times 2 plus 9. 5. Negative 2 times 3 plus 9. And are you noticing the pattern now? And what's the last one going to be? Nice. Okay. And then look what happens here. To get from 9 to 7, you go down to 2. Same thing here, up 1. We've got our rise and our run. Okay, so let's plot these points. So the first point we're going to plot is 0 and 9. 0 and 9. Who can tell me how to get to 0, 9? Is it to the right or is it up? 0, 9. Charlie, 0, 9. How do I plot it? Um, start at the x axis, and go to 0, which is nowhere. Yep. Straight up. Perfect. So there's our first point, 0, 9. The second point we're drawing is when x is 1, y is 7. 1, 7. Josh, tell me how to get to 1, 7. Yep. Up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Perfect. Our next one, when x is 2, y is 5. Uh, Kyler, tell me how to get to 2, 5. Yep. Yep. Up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, next one we're plotting is 3, 3. So we go 3 to the right and up 3. And then our last one is 4, 1. So we go 4 to the right and up 1. 
Once we plug our points, we get our ruler out. Charlie, going away. Off and away. You get your ruler out and you go right through the points. Put arrows on the ends of your graph. All right, so things to notice about this line. This point is our y-intercept, which Molly said was going to be 9. B value, is it 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Check. We were right. We predicted it correctly. The slope, we've already figured out the rise and the run. So the slope is negative 2 over 1 which is the same as negative 2, which was Rock's prediction for slope. So we got that right as well. Okay? And again, so we're connecting this equation represents this table and this graph. Okay? That table represents that table, sorry, that equation represents that table and that graph. Okay? And does it make sense that this one has a negative slope? Yes. Okay, so you should always be looking at your graph and making sure things make sense. Okay, great. Next one. Every straight line can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. And this is interesting. Or y equals b plus mx. Are those the same thing? They are. So if I wrote y equals 2x plus 7, what would be this format of writing that same thing? What's another way to write y equals 2x plus 7? Yep. 7 plus 2x. 7 plus 2x. Okay? So you have to get used to seeing them both ways. The number in front of the x is always the slope. And the number by itself is always the y intercept. Okay? The number in front of the x is always the slope number. The number by itself is always the y intercept number. Okay? All right, so for each line, determine the slope, the y intercept, and the equation. So you're getting, we're given the graph now, we have to figure out its slope, its y intercept, and its equation. Who can tell me how to figure out the slope of this one? Couple ways to do it. You could do a chart. Can you do a rate triangle? Here's my step pattern, right? My staircase. So it's a negative slope. Does everyone agree with that? And I'm going down three and right one. So my rise is going to be negative 3, my run is going to be 1 each time. Which means my slope is negative 3. So there I can fill my slope in. How do I figure out where my y-intercept is? It's where it touches the y-axis right here. So I can count up how, how far that is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So B is 9. Great, Kylie. Okay, so if M is negative 3 and B is 9, what's the equation? I always like to write this out first. And then just fill in the M and the B. So I know it's going to look like this, but M and B are going to be numbers. Josh, you writing this down? M and B are going to be numbers. So what's going to be the number I replace M with? Negative 3. Good. 
and then I still need the X. And what's going to be the number including the sign that I replace B with? Positive 9, so plus 9. So there's the equation of that line. Y equals negative 3X plus 9, which should mean to you it starts or it touches the Y axis at 9, and it's got a negative slope of down 3 over 1. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. I'm going to give you time. So think Positive, half or 0.5 for the slope number? Yes. How about the B, 1? Yeah. Okay, so then how do I put that into an equation? Y equals, what comes next? Half X. Instead of plus B, I put the B is? So plus 1. Okay, so the equation of this line up here is y equals a half times x plus 1. Okay, or 0.5x plus 1 would be fine as well. Okay, all right, the next one. Okay, uh, so we have to figure out the slope. So I'd be drawing a rate triangle, probably, since this is by 1s. So I'd be going over here and here and realizing it's a negative slope. Negative slope. And then I'd be counting out my rise knowing it's going to be negative. Counting out my rise, that's not, it's going to be negative what? Uh, negative three or four. Four, good. So this is my rise. And then my run, I always run to the right, so one, two, three, four, five. So my slope is going to be the rise, which is negative four, divided by the run, which is five. And that doesn't reduce, so my slope is negative four over five. Charlie, I'm going to take the phone, turn it off, put it in your pocket. Okay, what about the B value, the Y intercept? Kylie? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Okay. Be careful. Sometimes people accidentally just go from where they drew the right triangle. Make sure you count from zero for your Y intercept. So my initial value or my Y intercept is seven. So based on knowing that, who can tell me what the equation of the line should be? Uh, Paul. Y equals negative 4 over 5 times 7. Plus x. Oh, x. X. And then is it positive 7 or negative 7? So plus 7. So y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 7 is the equation of that line. Okay? All right, try the last one on your own. Okay, so I have people drawing right triangles, which is great. And I see lots of people writing positive here. So my rise is 5. Run is 2. So your slope is 5 over 2. Where's my line intercept? So I'm going along the y axis till I find out where my line touches it. And it happens to touch it at negative 4. Okay? How many people got 5 over 2 for the slope? 
Have over three for the slope. How about negative four for the y-intercept? Yes? So what would be the equation? Carly. Yes. Y equals five over two x minus four. Perfect. Perfect. So now the big finale. Now we're going to look at the equation, pick out the slope number, the y-intercept number, and draw the graph just based on that. Okay? The big finale. So here's my first equation, or my first line. Remember, this is a line here. The equation of a line. And I want to draw that line. So first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the y-intercept of the line is. Can anyone tell me what the y-intercept of the line is? What is it based on the equation? I know it's where, the, where it touches the y-axis. Based on this equation, what's the y-intercept? Negative 5, bro. Okay, so then you're going to go to your y-axis and put a point at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that point's on the line, Lynn. I know that point's on the line because my y-intercept is negative 5, so I right away know that negative 5 is on my line. Okay, so I put it on my line. Can you put it on your line? Okay, put it on your line. All right, now this is where the magic happens. What's my slope number? Three over four, and that represents the rise over the run. So that means it's so cool. From my y-intercept to get to another point on the line, I'm going to rise up three and run over four. There is another point on the line. From this one, I'm going to rise up three and go over four. From this one, I'm, oh, I run off the graph. How do I go backwards to fill in the rest of the space that I can? Instead of going up three and over four, I'm going to go down three and left four. Awesome. And then if I tried that again, I'd run off the graph. Now I just need to draw my line. And label it y equals three quarters x minus yeah. Okay, so there's your graph, and then you should be able to ask yourself questions like, does it have a positive slope? Yes. Is its y-intercept negative 5? Yep. Okay, is it slope 3 quarters? Yep, so I've drawn a problem. Okay? So just based on the equation, we were able to draw the line, because we know what the numbers in the formula stand for. We know what they stand for. Okay, I next one. Who can tell me what the y-intercept is for B just by looking at the equation? Y-intercept. Positive seven, yes. So I go to my y-axis and I put that point on my graph. So positive seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know that point's on the graph. No, that points on the graph, so I put it there on the graph. Okay? Based on the equation, what's my slope number? Negative two equals the rise over the run. Uh oh, it doesn't look like there's a number for the run. If there isn't one, what is it? One. Yes. Awesome. Okay? So put that one there. And what does the negative 2 for rise mean? Instead of going up 2, I'm going to go down 2. Down two. So I go down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. Keep going until you fall off the graph. Okay. 
And then you reverse it this way by going up two and left one. And then once you've got all your points drawn, you get your ruler out. Go right through all of them. Arrows on the ends. And then label it with the equation. And then you should reflect back once you've drawn it. Make sure it's a negative slope. Make sure it touches the y-axis at positive 7. Whenever you plot the y-intercept, I always check it twice because you can it's very easy to miscount. Okay. Same thing here, y equals x minus 3. Based on the equation, what is the y-intercept? Negative. negative 3. So everyone go to your y-axis and put a point on negative 3. So I know that my graph goes through that point. Negative 3. Based on the equation, what is the slope? It's the number in front of x. So if I don't see a number in front of x, what's that number? One. One. Very good. Is my rise over my run? And if I don't see a run, I fill in a one. <clears throat> so that means up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. Okay? So that's how I get the rest of my points. From my y-intercept, I go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And then reverse it, down one left one, until you run out of room. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. And you join the points with a ruler. Put your arrows on the ends and then label it y equals x minus 3. Okay, uh, the last one. Put a little star beside it. What is the y-intercept? Okay, we've got half, negative a half. Anyone else? The y-intercept is six. Okay, so this is one of those ones where you have to remember that the scope number is the one in front of x. Okay, it's a number in front of x, and the y-intercept is a number that doesn't have x with it. Okay, so I could rearrange this and write it like this, negative one-half x plus six, if that makes me feel better, okay? But the number without the x is the y-intercept. So uh, Molly's right, so we're gonna go up to six on the y-axis, and that's our y-intercept, our initial value, our starting point. We know for sure that's on the line. Now we need to know our slope. So if 6 is our y-intercept, what's our slope number? Negative 1 over 2. Negative always goes with the top number. Awesome. You never have a negative run. You always put the negative at the top, so it's your rise. Do you know what negative rise means? Yeah. So this is to get my points down one, right two, down one, right two, up one, left two, left two, and then join them with a the ruler. 
and then label it y equals six minus a half x, or you could, if you change it around, you could label it that, they're the same, okay? All right, so right away, I want you to skip to this page of the practice while this stuff's fresh in your head because it's the most important part. And I want you to draw, I want you to do number four, draw the check with your tutor and make sure that you can do this, okay? Right now. Um, 